We are searching for Sasquatch in the Kebab Forest along the Utah-Arizona border because of the Bigfoot sightings reported here. This is one of many reports that motivate an RMSO Bigfoot expedition into this area. Anonymous writes RMSO. Our son, who is an avid hunter-fisherman all-around sports nut, had a run-in with Bigfoot in the late 90s. He did talk with an Arizona BFRO a few years ago after it happened, and they posted his story without using his name, which is still listed on their site. I'll tell you what I know about it, how it has adversely affected him, and vouch for his complete honesty. We're from central Wisconsin. My husband's family is completely nuts about hunting, fishing, outdoors, camping, etc. He was raised from very little and was involved in all that stuff. He's also honest, no nonsense, not a drinker, or BS type storyteller. He got a Bachelor of Science, double major in Computer Science and Law Enforcement Administration. He did internship and summer work in law enforcement and so has that background in observation and investigation. He works in computer science data security. When he got married, they moved to Phoenix area to be by her family. He wondered about his hunting fishing because his central life is all about that. So at first we heard about him fishing there and his hunting in northern Arizona. He was excited about the huge, never-ending wooded areas there. Then, after a couple of years, he completely stopped hunting, didn't talk about it, and he completely focused on fishing. He had a couple offhand comments every now and then about sticking with fishing because he wasn't the prey, and that he didn't want to hunt there because he didn't want to be the prey. We knew something happened to change him, but he wouldn't talk about it. But we also noticed that he started carrying a gun when he camped. Since Arizona allows handguns, he didn't think much of it. Around 2005 or so, we were visiting him and we were alone with him in his family room and his wife and daughters were outside and away. He didn't want to scare them by telling them anything about Bigfoot. And he went to a computer website with Bigfoot calls and asked us, what kind of animal makes these sounds? Then him and my husband went back and forth trying to eliminate or identify familiar animal calls. He said he never paid any attention to anything about Bigfoot until he went hunting in Kabab. He was visibly shaken, white as a ghost. He said his experience totally changed his life. He said, Dad, you always taught me not to be afraid of the woods, respect it, but we were in charge. So I thought I was king of the jungle. Here I am an adult, and I'm scared of the woods. I've went from being a little kid, scared of the woods, to thinking I'm king of the jungle, to now being afraid to go in the woods. He said, I saw face to face a massive, hairy, monkey man monster. I looked right at something that's not supposed to be real, but is real. I pressed him, how far away? What did it look like? He said, Ma, it was like right there, right there in my face. So here's what he told us. Him and a buddy went bow hunting for deer in the fall to the north rim of the Grand Canyon in the Kebab Forest area. They both had their pickups, tents, ATVs. They were in the remote higher elevation on a dirt mountain road. They set up their tents, built a fire. They both went to the woods for a while, but they noticed odd bent twisted trees, scratches on log formations. They both started noticing sounds in the woods like something was trolling them and they had some rocks thrown. So they went back to their tents, but the noises and rock throwing continued. So my son's buddy said it was too creepy, and he packed up his tent and gear and left, while there was still daylight in order to get down the trail back off the mountain terrain. Our son figured he's king of the jungle, decided that since he got a lottery deer permit, he was going to stay a few days. He wanted to keep hunting, so he stayed in his tent by himself that night. He said he didn't sleep that well, because he kept hearing noises, rocks actually rubbing against his tent. But he came out to hunt, so at the crack of dawn, he gets on his ATV and drives back into the woods. He parked ATV and started hunting on foot with his bow. Again, he saw the twisted trees, brush, structures, and tree scratches. As he walked around doing his hunting, he became more and more aware that something was trailing him. He said he went through a mental checklist, what it could be, such as if a bear or a cougar was stalking him. He reasoned he probably wouldn't hear it so plainly. Then he wondered if a wounded animal was stalking him, which could have been why it was making tracking noises. He said he finally got mad and decided to figure out what he was dealing with. 
So with his hilly, mountainous, woodsy terrain, there are canyons and gullies, he decided to drop down and double behind whatever was stalking him. So he quietly snuck down and behind some rocks, woods, and terrain, and then snuck up on whatever it was there. He started to notice an awful strong, musky scent. It was stinky, wet, dirty dog smell. So he slowly crept toward whatever it was there. Then he got through some terrain. There he saw a huge, massive monkey man, without a tail, crouching down, looking the other way, looking for where he was. He said he was so petrified and scared, he wanted to run and scream. Being petrified and responding by habit or fear, he aimed the bow and arrow at it. The creature then saw him. He said it stood up and let out a chest-rattling growl. So there our son was with this small deer bow and arrow pointed at it, facing it, frozen in fear. He said it had a human looking face. He said, I'm looking at this massive monster that doesn't exist. My bow and arrow probably wouldn't even nick it. This nine foot monster could charge me and break me like a stick. He said he was transfixed in terror as they faced each other. Then Arsen said he decided he had to ease away and not scream or run like prey. So he backed off with the bow and arrow, then backed up as fast but as smoothly as he could muster. He then tried to watch it without staring as he tried to walk back and away toward his ATV. He said this thing shadowed him all the way, making noises, crashing trees, and ducking behind trees. When he got to the ATV, he jumped in and drove to his camp. By this time it was approaching dusk and so he felt he couldn't get out of there on the remote dirt road at night. And he didn't feel safe staying in the tent. So he got in a truck to wait for dawn. He said throughout the night he could hear noises, hear stuff thrown at the truck, and felt like something was brushing against the truck every now and then. Whenever he noticed anything he laid on the panic corn. He said he was so scared he didn't think he could survive the night. At the crack of dawn, he got out of the truck long enough to grab his stuff and throw it in the back of the truck and got himself out of there. He's never went back. He says he's got no interest in deer hunting in those woods again because it's one thing to go there when you're the king of the jungle, but if not, you're the prey where the massive monstrous thing can break you like a twig. Wow, what an amazing encounter in the Kebab forest. It's just a rough remote amazing area lots of bigfoot sightings in that area we appreciate you reaching out to us with this bigfoot sighting report i hope you all enjoy keep on watching we're gonna keep on squatching